Hi, my name is Paul Rogers. I'm an environmental engineer and I'm going to talk for about the next 10 minutes about units of measure and making conversions. I'd like to start with a short story to give some background about why I'm doing this. Some years ago I was in a course for wastewater treatment plant operators uh, for continuing education and the instructor gave a demonstration problem. He said your wastewater treatment plant has water flowing into it at 2 million gallons per day and the wastewater has phosphorus in it at a concentration of 100 milligrams per liter. How many pounds per day of phosphorus is flowing into the plant? And the way he demonstrated the solution was to pass out these cardstock paper calculator thingies where you slide the inner sleeve through the outer sleeve until it pointed to 2 million gallons per day and then you turned a little pinwheel until it pointed to 100 milligrams per liter and there in this little magic window was your answer in pounds per day and that really bothered me he didn't just miss a golden opportunity to bring us all along a little bit in managing units and making conversions he missed the express purpose of that course which was to bring us all along a little bit and worse than that he implied to everyone every one of us that this was over our heads that we didn't have the ability to understand the fundamentals how to make conversions. So my mission here today is to bring you all along a little bit, whatever, you're, whatever level you're at now in terms of managing units and making conversions. I hope when I'm done, you'll be a little better. I'm going to start with three rules. The first is that anything multiplied by one is unchanged. The second rule is anything divided by itself is 1. And the third rule, which can have an infinite number of variations, is that if you start out with an equality and you do something to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other side. Those three rules are going to be sufficient for handling all the conversions we do today and they're also going to be necessary. I'm going to write them again over here. So let's convert some units. We'll convert <clears throat> three feet to another measure of length. We can convert it to any other measure of length we want, but we can't change what it is. It's three feet, a foot plus a foot plus a foot. We can convert it to inches, or meters, or miles, or light years, uh, but we can't change what it is. First step is to write it down. Paper and pencil, or in this case, dry erase board with marker, invaluable tools to help us manage units and make conversions. So we write it down three feet. And you'll notice I very deliberately drew the multiplication symbol between these two values, indicating that they are multiplied by one another. The effect of that is to bind them together to make one value. The foot term is not out there as a note on the side to remind you what units we're working on. It is part of the value, and I'll show you what I mean. If you had 2 plus 2 plus 2, you would readily agree that we could write that as 3 times 2. Well, in this case, we've got a foot plus a foot plus a foot, and that equals 3 times foot. So if we lose track of the foot, it's just as big an error as if we lost track of the two. So remember, the, the units of measure term is bound to the number by the process of multiplication. And you handle that term just as you would a numeral like two. First step, write it down. We've done that. The second step, go to the book. We can use our own brains. In this case, one foot is 12 inches. We can make the conversion because we to inches. We can convert three feet to inches because we know there's one foot. One foot equals 12 inches. That's the essence of a conversion table or a conversion is that it, it defines one value relative to another. And one foot is equal to 12 inches. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the one using this first rule. That one's not doing anything for us, and it's I'm just going to unclutter the board, nothing else. The next step I'm going to do is divide both sides by foot. Whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other side. 
And now I can look at this second rule and realize this equals 1, which means this equals 1, which means I can multiply that by this without changing its value. And with a little practice, you recognize those are all numerator terms. That's a denominator term. We got foot over foot. They cancel their one. And we've got 3 times 12 times inch, which equals 36 times inch. The last comment I'll make is that this is not a new way of doing it. It's not my way of doing it. It's not a trick you can use to help you remember. It's the way the mechanics of converting units works once we define these rules.